Next is the author of The Physics of a Flying Saucer. Please welcome Ted Roach. Oh, welcome, Ted. How are you? Welcome. Well, that was real beam me up, Teddy it stuff. Was, yes. Now, we were talking about the physics of flying saucers, getting flying saucers around. Now, what is your theory on how a flying saucer getting from galaxies away to Earth, how would the physics work? Well, we've got to understand that uh, we come from a very primitive uh, level in physics, and I've analysed the, the field that we, we're in, the gravitational field, as a time field caused by large number of little particles called gravitons, billions of gravitons radiating out from matter like light does. And when you analyse it as a time field, you, you then come to conclusions which are at a higher level than you do with Newtonian physics. So getting here from light years away isn't done by physical movement, it's done by time? That's right. You develop around the craft a time field very similar to the way light does when it comes from distant galaxies. And you can travel, you could go to the French Riviera for afternoon tea. Um, now if you we're getting understand, close. We're if, getting very close if here. You, if you understand the physics, you can then develop the craft. How do you know? Well, I've looked at the, the, the motion of the planets and analysed the planets using this uh, physics. Uh, and uh, it all fits in. It fits in with uh, electric fields and magnetic fields, all as dimensional time fields. And, uh, and there are a very large number of people who have now been calling me, doctors of science, who have called me saying that they are very, very interested in the physics. You believe in flying saucers? I do. When you look at the large number of galaxies there are in the universe, the, the, the Hubble Space Telescope analysed mm -hmm. just a five cent area of the heavens, and they found 25 galaxies each with around 100 to 200 billion stars in each one, and that's throughout the whole of the cosmos, then the, the chances of there being life elsewhere is astronomically high. You've, um, you've filed quite a few patents. Let's have mm -hmm. a look at some of the inventions. The, the Jets, Jetsons uh, light aircraft. Yes. Well, how, that, how does that work? Well, that's, that's like a flying saucer. And that, what that does, it's very similar to the lens of a camera, which um, the, these, this graviton field, it refocuses the graviton field in the direction of where the craft wants to go. And the occupants of the craft, in fact, have no G-forces on them. And that's why these flying saucers can change direction um, at, with 100 Gs compared with our, our uh, jet fighter mm -hmm. pilots who can only withstand about eight or nine. What about the machine that identifies abnormal magnetic fields in the body? Okay, well I gave a, a lecture to the uh, Physics Society at Sydney University a number of years ago and the professor of uh, medicine there said that I gave them a number of ideas because when you look at magnetic fields as time fields, you can then understand that, um, that cells uh, when they reproduce and break up, if, they, if they're in an uh, abnormal time field when they, they form, they then form cancers. And so we can, we, we, mm. we can look at cancers from that, uh, from that perspective as of time fields. What happened to your theories, your paperwork, on flying saucers? Well, when I put my patents in, I put uh, one provisional patent with ten inventions into the, uh, uh, into the patent office. They were taken by the Australian Defence Department and the Australian Safeguards Office, and mm -hmm. I have that in my book, the, the letter that I got back from them. And, uh, and uh, my, one of my daughters uh, found uh, this high-tech bug. I think I had it here somewhere. It's, oh, here there it is. is there. That, that's a five-cent piece. Let me, there's, there's the let me little... just pick this up. So just... you're saying you gave all this information for patents and the Defence Force... Yeah. Confiscated it. Well, that is a that is and a, bugged your house. That's a security bug uh, uh, that the CIA, the American Jews, and the Australian Security Forces. So, use. do you think the Australian Army or intelligence is actually space travelling as we speak? No, but they are wanting to know. This is Star Wars physics. It's all Star Wars physics, mm -hmm. and the Americans are spending trillions of dollars on Star Wars physics. The stealth mm -hmm. bomber is part of it, and they're monitoring what everybody's doing. And I'm just, I probably just happen to be one of those people. Hmm. So, under you believe there have aliens visited us? Well, I, in my book, I explain uh, Noah's Ark and, and and what Ezekiel saw and a number of other things, and that it would appear from the technology that. Uh, 
there that uh, we've been visitors for a very, very long time. Mm. And when you take into account that uh, some of the galaxies are over a billion years mm. older than Earth, there's a high probability that we've mm. been looked at just the same as we look at animals in national parks and things mm. like that. And, and when do you think I'd be able to get to Paris for afternoon tea? Well, it all depends. If we can, if we can get the finance, there's trillions of dollars worth of um, inventions that we can develop. And the motor car and highways and traffic jams and pollution will all become mm. redundant. So we've got to get into this Star Wars technology on a commercial basis and, and let the military look after their thing. But we need to start doing it so that we can have our afternoon tea on the French Riviera. Sounding good to me. And if you'd like to know how you can do this and perhaps expand on your knowledge, it's called The Physics of, uh, of a Flying Saucer. Fascinating to, uh, to listen to your words. Thank you very much for joining us. Ted Thanks. Roach, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> UFOs, a respected nuclear physicist and lecturer. He's been involved in investigations and the exposure of US government cover-ups for more than 38 years. Please welcome to Midday, Stanton Friedman. Welcome, Stanton. Pleasure to be here. Do you believe in UFOs? No, the belief is for people in religion or politics, I guess. I'm a scientist who's been collecting data for 40 years. And I'm convinced the evidence is overwhelming that planet Earth is being visited by intelligently controlled extraterrestrial spacecraft, that we're dealing with a cosmic Watergate, some few people in governments know, and that none of the arguments made against those conclusions by a small group of noisy negativists stand up under careful scrutiny. And we're dealing with the biggest story of the millennium. This is the planet Earth by aliens and cover up of the best data, bodies and wreckage, for 51 years. Hmm. So belief has nothing to do with it. Evidence has everything to do with it. You talk about evidence? Yes. What is it? Well, in my lectures, I always start with five large-scale scientific studies. And I ask after each one, how many people have read this one? If I'm lucky, it's 2%. In England, three of seven lectures, nobody had read any of them. So evidence should always be the place to start. That doesn't keep the noisy negativists from you know, doing their research by proclamation. There is no evidence. That's a lot easier to say than, oh, I didn't bother to look at it. Uh, one of the studies covers 3,200 sightings done for the United States Air Force. Over 600 could not be identified, separate from the ones for which there wasn't enough information. A quality evaluation showed the better the quality of the sighting, the more likely to be unexplainable. In other words, if you look at the characteristics of the best cases, clearly they're manufactured objects. I don't mean little blobs of light in the right. sky. That's not very useful. Whose behavior indicates they had to be made someplace other than Earth, because if we could make things that look like that and fly like that, up, down, back, forth, 10,000 miles an hour in the atmosphere, right angle turns, mm. without noise, the exhaust, mm. all that sort of stuff, we wouldn't be building F-16s, 17s, 18s, MiG-29s. What's important about a flying saucer is the technology. They can fly circles around anything we got flying. If it wasn't built here, it was built someplace else. But the evidence? Well, we have eyewitness testimony. We have over 5,000 physical trace cases from 65 countries, and they're mm -hmm. dull after the first 200. These are where people see saucers on or near the ground, and mm -hmm. after the saucer leaves, one finds physical changes. Mm -hmm. And you can compare that dirt, if you will, or vegetation with nearby dirt and see differences that you cannot explain other than by some very exciting sort of things happening. Uh, a thousand of those cases involve reports of beings associated with the craft. We have 3,500 pilot sightings collected by a retired NASA scientist, Dr. Richard Haynes. Mm -hmm. 45 countries, and they're dull again. The same thing is happening all over the world by people you trust with your lives when you're flying airplanes. But if so many visitations have happened, and as you say, say so many pilots have gone, oh, don't know what that is, there's a UFO, why don't we know about it? Why don't they introduce themselves? I don't talk to the squirrels in my backyard. Uh, we don't know that they haven't introduced themselves. There are all kinds of stories floating around mm -hmm. about, for example, a saucer landing at, uh, in Holloman Air Force Base mm -hmm. in New Mexico in 1964. Aliens getting out, military guys going over, shaking hands and walking off together. I've talked to two people who claim to have seen the footage shot of that event. I haven't seen it. Mm -hmm. So we don't know what the government knows. But uh, clearly the aliens' purpose in coming here is not to appear on talk shows. Not to land on a White House lawn. <laughs> you know, they're here mm. for their own purposes. You were uh, one of the uh, original civilian investigators of the Roswell. The civilian the, original the, investigator. Uh, yes. investigator. What happened at Roswell? Well, condensing 20 years of study, uh, and I've been working on it that long, which mm -hmm. seems utterly ridiculous but for one case. Mm. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, two alien spacecraft had a mid-air collision 
demolishing one, exploding into little pieces, debris coming down mm -hmm. 85 miles northwest of Roswell. The other one almost intact, but with a big gash in the side, coming down 100 miles west of there. Uh, both were found. New Mexico is a very lightly inhabited mm -hmm. place, almost as bad as Australia. There aren't many people mm -hmm. around. Uh, the first one, a rancher found this wreckage. He reported to the sheriff a few days later. Military go out, grab everything. The cover story goes out. There was headlines, mm -hmm. major headlines. Army captures flying saucer. That as was the in the newspapers. Mm -hmm. there, there we go. That's as Roswell Army Airfield, not Royal Australian Air Force. As the investigator, did you see the spacecraft? I didn't get involved until 1978. This happened in 1947, okay. but I've talked to a lot of the top military people who were involved. Mm -hmm. Remember, the military group involved here, and balloons are, everybody throws, must have been a balloon. It wasn't a balloon. Crash test dummies. That's one of the silliest explanations mm -hmm. uh, for this reason. They did drop crash test dummies in mm. New Mexico, but not until after 1953. This happened in 47. Mm. And they were all the size of pilots. Six feet tall, 175 pounds, and nobody who described the body said anything other than little guys, skinny little guys, big mm. head, no ears, no crash test dummy. Mm. So all the people you've spoken to read the Roswell incident say it did happen? But the government said it didn't happen. Well, we we didn't see that alien footage. We've seen, you know, the famous bit of footage about oh, the, the autopsy. autopsy. Yeah, I've met with the exploiter false? of the film, false. Putting everything he told me in our first conversation was a lie. Mm -hmm. I mean, except for that little bad start. Mm. You know, and it was downhill from there. Mm. I can't tell you who made it. Mm. But there's certainly no reason to relate that to Roswell. Do you believe there have been alien abductions? Yes. Uh, I've worked with some of the top investigators of abductions mm -hmm. who collectively looked over a thousand cases. I'm convinced a number of earthlings have indeed been abducted, but every case has to be taken on its own merits. Mm -hmm. This document you bought, uh, you retrieved from the CIA? Well, it's a long, tortured procedure to get documents in the United States. You file a request, they turn you down. You appeal, they turn mm -hmm. you down again. Sometimes you go to court, sometimes not. This document took me five years to get. It's a released CIA UFO document mm -hmm. on which you can read eight words, not very useful words, you'll notice, uh, info location, info mm -hmm. date, USSR, and a bunch of numbers. Even the security markings are not there. Mm. This is what happens under freedom of information. National security is mm. a reason for withholding information. Of course, they say there's nothing classified about UFOs. Well, except for all those classified documents you can't mm. get. Fascinating. Uh, you don't think people think you're out there? <laughs> no, I'll tell you, I've given over 700 lectures all over the world, 14 mm -hmm. countries, and I judge by the questions at the end of the mm -hmm. lecture. I've had 11 hecklers in 700 lectures, and you get that many if you talk about religion, sports, politics, show business, okay. whatever. So the response from my professional colleagues is what I value the most, and they've mm -hmm. been uniformly good. Well, if you'd like to catch uh, Stanton Friedman on uh, his Australian lecture tour, you may have the opportunity to ask a question, which I believe you opened the floor. Oh, yeah. Uh, UFOs are real. Uh, there's a telephone number on your screen, 0398 74 23 44, and uh, you'd be able to uh, get some information otherwise not available. We thank you very much for your report. 11 today. cities. I'm going to see the country like I've never seen it before. <laughs> <laughs> Good on you. Well, we do appreciate your time on Midday. Thanks for having Stanton me. Stanton Friedman, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs>
two people by 1985. Right. The number's well over 200 now. The government grabbed the bodies, intimidated the people. Lord knows how much they've learned. New Mexico is a place where more classified work was done than any other state. Easiest right. place to okay, this carry something, I'm with to you cover now. something yeah. up. So that's why they also, that's why the UFOs could have been in the, there in the first place, because it yeah. was a strategic... It was, it was the only place in the world where you could study the three areas of technology that showed that soon Earthlings would be moving out. Nuclear weapons, powerful V2 rockets... That's this Area 51 and, that's... Uh, no, that's up. over in Nevada. That's another okay. place. All right. Yeah, there are all kinds of crazy stuff going on there. But New Mexico was where the first nuclear weapon was tested. Mm -hmm. And where the first rockets were tested. And all the Star Wars technology as yeah, well. And uh, Area 51 had all these crazy systems. And anybody who thinks we know all that's going on out there is wrong. <laughs> Governments can keep secrets. The Director of Central Intelligence admitted for the first time ever that his annual budget in 1996 was only $26.6 .6 billion dollars. U.S. Black budget, nobody knows what it goes for. That's oh, CIA, really? NSA, DIA, NRO, okay. alphabet soup kind of stuff. Right. That's an awful lot of money that you can cover up, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Well, it is. Um, you've not seen any, uh, you, you're not seen any UFOs yourself. No, uh, I've never seen yeah. a flying saucer or an alien. Right. My lectures, UFOs are real, but flying saucer, aliens, call it what you want. But I've talked, at the end of every lecture, I ask my audiences, typically 10% believe they've seen one. How many of you reported what you saw? 90% of the hands go down. Right. Anybody left? I said, were you in the military at the time? I get some great stories. So, Mr. Friedman, g'day. Yes? If naked aliens landed here, how would we know what not to look at? <laughs> Uh, Very thought, more thoughtful than most of the questions from the debunkers, Frank. Yes. Well, there's, there's now this, this uh, talking about debunking. You debunk this. Uh, this is footage that someone came up with, supposedly yeah. uh, from was it from the Roswell incident? Well, originally alien, they supposedly. said Roswell. Yeah. Then, as soon as it was clear that this didn't match Roswell, oh, sorry, this so-called cameraman says it was over near Socorro, 175 miles away, and a month earlier, Roswell. They said four long fingers, no thumb. Yeah. There were six there, if you noticed. Oh, I did count. Skinny yeah. little guys, <laughs> uh, and no ears, uh, just the big eyes. Uh, nothing like that creature there. I'll give that film credit for one thing that was shown in about 40 countries. Mm -hmm. It caused more discussion about flying saucers oh, so than anything similar. else that happened yeah. in 10 years. I debated at Oxford University and won, incidentally. You did? Because of that. Yeah. This house believes that intelligent alien life has visited planet Earth. We got 60% of the vote. Do you think in your lifetime that the American government, or internationally, that the subject's going to open up and we'll actually find out, yes, we have been visited and uh, these are the people? Oh, yeah. Or yeah, already <coughs> last year in England, a show called uh, Strange But True took a survey in the middle of a debate about UFOs. And uh, 100,000 people called in in response to the question, do you think aliens have visited Earth? 92% said yes. So we're heading in the right direction. I'm yeah. an optimist. Yeah, I think some young reporter in the States will want a Pulitzer Prize. There's one here for, yeah. the, for the having, if he comes to people like me to get started. Yeah, I'm very much an optimist. Before I leave this, shuffle off this old coil, I think we will hear the truth about flying You could become the Cosmos uh, Watergate uh, reporter. <laughs> <laughs> if there is indeed a... Uh, there is a cosmic Watergate. There's no, I'm actually working on a documentary now called The Cosmic Cover-Up. Mm -hmm. I wish I had it ready so I could take it with me on this lecture tour around the country, but I don't yet. So. And th that lecture tour is called UFOs Are, are Real. Real. You're yeah. traveling around Australia at the moment. Eleven uh, major venues. Right. Uh, and I re mean major. Uh, Brisbane and Gold Coast and Darwin and Perth and Melbourne, Dallas uh, Auditorium, Dallas Very Brooks good on Auditorium. Your geography. Yeah, yeah and Hobart and Launceston, which I'd never heard of before, sorry. And Newcastle and Canberra and Adelaide. I'm going to see the country like I've never seen it. Well, if uh, you want to go along, I mean, look for the dates. Uh, Stanton is going to be uh, here for a while in Australia, aren't you? Really? Yeah, I don't leave until the 30th. Okay. of August. Of, oh, you're doing all that stuff in that time? It's pretty, oh, yeah. Uh, Plus, I've already done 17 interviews, and I think they got me lined up for 17 more. Well, I hope you're not plucked up by UFO before you actually finish the tour. <laughs> I wish you. they would fly me home, though. Well, It'd be they a might. lot faster. They might. You know more about them than uh, anyone else does. Thank you very much for coming. I'm Thanks. sorry we could talk about it for, uh, forever, but we have to be off here at 8.30. <laughs> but, <laughs> next thank month. you. Stanford Friedman. And... I don't...